Hi, I'm Gary Kim, the editor of IP Business Magazine, and I'm here today with George Smeen. Smeen? Smeen. Smeen, I'm sorry. Uh, Senior Director of Product Marketing with Nominum. Right. And we're going to talk today a little bit about what's happening in terms of disruption of the practices that we've normally used for signaling and routing uh, voice calls. Correct. So, Gary, what happened in the industry over the past probably 10 years is that the migration to IP concentrated on the quality of the voice call in IP and looked at the end-to-end -end management of a session uh, from one SIP phone to another or one IP phone to another and allowed the soft switches to really merge these two together, to be able to interconnect the two together. What has been ignored and what I call the inconvenient truth of the telecom industry is that even though we have this growing critical mass of IP telephony taking place, there's still very strong reliance on the legacy TDM environments for numbering and routing plan management. So whenever you have to dip for number portability or whenever you're performing some heuristic for least cost routing, very often carriers are still relying on the TDM side that is either managed by their own network or they're buying services from other TDM providers. So what Nominum has done is taken the ENUM standard, which stands for electronic numbering, and it's simple mapping of telephone numbers to DNS addresses, and build a routing directory, a routing database that would sit inside the carrier's network to help manage and consolidate all these numbering and routing plans inside IP so you can natively solve these legacy telephony routing solutions in IP without having to rely and continue investing into the TDM side. And for the first time now carriers are able not only to go into uh, managing an end-to-end -end call on IP, but now they're able to solve all of the legacy routing environment in telephony in native IP in itself. Now I'm guessing there's got to be an advantage here in terms of quality and performance as well as cost? Absolutely. Well, let's tackle the cost first. With cost, Number one, from an operation perspective, you're really not having to deal and, and uh, manage the routing plans in various databases that are spread out across the board uh, in your network. You're able to consolidate them and you're able to run them on IP-based software. And the beauty of the IP model is that you're running it on software that runs on very commoditized type of hardware, Linux-based or Solaris-based, that is really inexpensive. We're not needing big iron to do that. When it comes to quality, you're able, now IP offers you sometimes better codecs, or in some cases you're able to really uh, optimize on the transcoding capability. So carriers are talking about transcoding free operations, either in wireless or even wireline. You're able to choose what is the originating point of a conversation on IP and what is the endpoint, and make sure that you, you can bypass or stay on uh, similar codecs in the connection. And the, the last point is really around uh, management. When it comes to really being able to abstract the data and being able to put it all in one place, in one repository, you're enabling it to serve for new type of applications or beyond uh, you know, legacy telephony, beyond normal telephone calls, things like mashups or content download, that people need to build back against certain numbers. Now you're making this routing repository, routing and routing plan and numbering plan management in one place accessible for other applications. Now, it sounds like this is a win-win for everybody, but inevitably in our business there are people who don't want to do this for all kinds of logical business reasons. Are, are there barriers to adoption that need to be overcome? The, at this the point? barriers to adoption is that the, I, I would not say people don't want to do it. The motivation for doing it needs to be driven by the business case. And in general, the motivation is, uh, let's say, riper for carriers who are doing more IP trafficking or who are seeing that they need to invest more in IP. So the motivation varies and it depends on the phases that a carrier or company is in, in, the trans in, in their stage in the transformation to IP. They're going to see either more incentives or they, they're going to see more incentive than others. So for folks who are really delivering retail voice over IP or delivering enterprise voice over IP, or wholesale interconnect carriers who are already doing uh, traffic on IP, they have the motivation. For those who have already invested in TDM and they're not looking at going beyond voice and right now they're happy with the status quo, they're not going to be as motivated as the others. But at some point in time, 
these guys, the, the, at least the TDM-based providers, are also looking at uh, NGN networks. They're also looking at IMS. And it simply means that they're going to take a little bit longer to adopt the technology. But at some point, this sounds like an inevitable move. Every carrier will have to it do it. It is an inevitable move. And the reason is that there has been an equivalent function in the TDM world called the service control point. And really what Nominum is doing with the IP application routing directory is really it's a new control point. We call it the network control point because it serves as a pivot as this uh, virtual cloud of telephony data inside the network that is really serving uh, to the becoming the central nervous system of the network and helping uh, all applications to be able to figure out how to interoperate and how to route and how to traffic on within a, a carrier's network or across different networks. George, thank you very much for speaking thank with you. us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And thank you for watching.